Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this is the buzz on molluscum contagiosum. Molluscum contagiosum, or just molluscum, is a type of skin wart. They are caused by a pox virus, and usually they're seen in kids from about age 2 to age 10, although they can be seen in adults who have compromised immune systems. Molluscum is transmitted by direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can also be transmitted by touching surfaces uh, that someone who's had molluscum has been using or sitting on, or towels or personal items like that. It can also be transmitted from one part of the body to another. Say if you scratch this area and it has molluscum on it, you scratch another area, you can move it from one part of the body to another. You just have to move the virus from one place to another. So this is very common in kids who have eczema, because what are they doing? They're scratching their skin a lot, and that eczema breaks down the skin's barrier to infection. We said the molluscum is kind of like a special type of wart, so let's differentiate molluscum warts from common viral warts, and I think everyone knows what a common wart looks like. Common warts are often seen on the fingers, and they're usually one or two together, maybe three, and they have a rough surface, like in this picture. It looks like the surface is sandpapery and rough. They can get pretty big. And in kids, they can get up to the five to 10 millimeter range. That's almost a half an inch. Molluscum, on the other hand, look more like this. They're smooth and shiny. We call it waxy. You see it has kind of a dull glow to it when you shine the light to it. And they're umbilicated, meaning that they have a little dimple or pit in the middle of them. And the umbilication is like your umbilicus, your belly button. So these lesions are waxy and shiny, and they have a little belly button in them, especially the larger lesions will have a little belly button. Molluscum are usually smaller. They're in the two to five millimeter range, and they show up in clusters, sometimes large clusters of bumps, like you can see on this leg here. In kids, these are often seen on the face, around the eyes. They may be on the trunk and on the extremities as well. One classic spot where we see molluscum is on the inside of the elbow. And because this is often up against the child's side, we'll see it spread from the elbow to the side or vice versa from the side to the elbow. Sometimes molluscum will be itchy, but otherwise we don't see a lot of symptoms with these. Most kids don't even notice them. They're just sitting there on their skin. Uh, these can be diagnosed just by looking at them, but occasionally if a, a typical molluscum shows up, not sure what it is, Someone might want to get a biopsy of that, look at it under a microscope, and then the diagnosis can be definitively made. Molluscum in children is self-limited. That means they're temporary. And that temporary could take six months to two years before these go away. But in the end, they will go away without any kind of treatment or intervention. If they ever do come back, that's rare. Sometimes they do come back. They shouldn't last very long, maybe a month or two before going away. Treatment of molluscum is not required. They will go away eventually. It may take six months to two years, but in the end, the immune system figures out that these bumps shouldn't be there and it attacks them and kills them off. However, if the lesions are very numerous, disfiguring, they're in a bad area like around the eyes or on the face, around the genitals or a place that gets irritated, so they're causing the patient a lot of discomfort, then we can try some treatment. What might be done is at a dermatology office, they may use a medicine called cantharidin, which is a blistering agent, and it irritates the skin and gets the immune system to attack these lesions. Um, Aldera is a medicine that may be prescribed that you can use at home. And you can also try using medications like salicylic acid, which is in uh, Dr. Scholl's or Compound W. All of these chemical agents irritate the skin and trigger the immune system to kill off the molluscum. Here's some inflamed molluscum. You can see they're getting pus inside them. That's the immune system coming in and destroying all the warty, uh, warty molluscum cells. It will look for all the world like the child has a skin infection like we saw in episodes 37 and 38, but these don't have bacteria in them. In them. The, the pus is just white blood cells from the immune system trying to kill off this uh, wart infected skin. Here's another one later on, the molluscum are starting to die and regress. And there's this red flare around the lower one. That's a good sign that the immune system is infiltrating the area and trying to clean things up. 
when some of these are treated and the immune system gets triggered by using the blistering agents and all that, then you'll see all the lesions all over the body, even the ones that haven't been treated, will suddenly start getting irritated because the immune system has been triggered and it's attacking them all over the body. And then finally, they will get inflamed and go away. Sometimes physical methods will be used instead of chemical methods. So they'll, they'll curatage these, which means physically cutting them off or using cryotherapy or laser therapy. But like I said, we don't like to treat this all the time because there are risks to treating molluscum. There are several reasons that we don't just across the board recommend treating molluscum. We try to save treatment for the worst cases, those ones that are really bothering the child or in a, or in a bad area. First reason is sometimes when you treat molluscum, it doesn't get better, it actually spreads because you're irritating the skin and that skin is full of pox virus. And if the moisture and discharge from those lesions gets on healthy skin, well, it can in invade that skin. The second big reason is when you put these medications on the skin, it's hard just to contain them just to the lesions. And sometimes it gets on the healthy skin. In fact, very often it gets on the healthy skin. And those medications can burn into healthy skin. Just this week, we had a child who came in. And this is a picture of my patient's skin. They went to dermatology. And dermatology did what uh, dermatology does. And they put some cantharidin on it, that blistering agent. And because it was on the skin folds of the neck, there was a chemical treat that chemical treatment spread onto the healthy skin and just ate it up. So once again, treatment is not required. And if it's not bothering them, you may just want to wait out the molluscum, which will eventually go away. This close up shows another risk of treatment, and that's bacterial skin infection or impetigo. You can see that it's starting to get some orange crusting on there, and that's probably from staph or strep getting into the skin. I had to give this patient some epiricin ointment to clear out the bacteria as it was starting to get really deeper into the neck and she was starting to get some pain there. So check out episode 37 for more information on impetigo. And finally, treatment of molluscum can cause scarring. You can see these little darker areas, there's four or five of them on the bottom. Those are scars that are gonna be around for a long time because of treatment. Um, treatment will very often cause scarring, but I'll tell you, sometimes these molluscum will scar the skin even without any treatment. So I think it's best to leave the molluscum alone and just avoid the, the higher risk of treating it. To prevent molluscum, we want to avoid unnecessary skin-to-skin -skin contact, avoid touching dirty surfaces, make sure that you are taking care of your child's skin, moisturizing when you need to, not using harsh soaps, not using bubble baths, things like that, and rinsing off after swimming and getting into some dry clothes. Don't use a hot tub. If you swim in the lake, Around here at Lake Oconee, you got to rinse off. I think I've said that in 20 videos already. Um, and I have to stress, eczema is a very important uh, situation. Kids with eczema, this is another one of my patients who has a history of eczema. In the crook of the arm there, right in the front of the elbow, that's a classic place to see eczema. And you can see that this child has already been affected by molluscum in, that, uh, in the front of the elbow. Eczema is a huge risk factor for getting molluscum because the skin is already irritated and has a little bit of breakdown and the child is scratching it off. And so it's very important to take care of the eczema. Avoid overuse of soaps. Avoid using harsh soaps. Dove bar soap is probably the most gentle. Use good moisturizer. Don't use bubble baths. If you are a child who has eczema and uh, you have to use steroids, please do not use steroids on these areas where you have molluscum. The steroids will act like fertilizer for the molluscum and will definitely make it spread. So talk to your doctor or your dermatologist about what to do if you have bad eczema and you need to treat it, but you wanna avoid using steroids on any area with molluscum. So to summarize the key points, this is a virus. It is temporary. It may take a long time to go away, but it will go away in the end. Treatment is not absolutely necessary and we usually try to avoid it. Try to avoid close personal contact, touching dirty surface areas, Make sure that you take care of your child's skin, especially if they have eczema, and hopefully we can avoid getting uh, molluscum down the road. Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this has been The Buzz on Parenting and Pediatrics. We'll see you next time.